Assalamualaikum warahmatullah. Understanding it is the most uh, almost the most difficult chapter to understand, and apply to our life is lahat or kafet. Yes, there are uh, a lot of information about it uh, in the books. The exegetes, exegetes of the Quran, and the interpreters narrate a lot of stories which are true. I mean, I, no one can say that no, they are made up stories. No, they are true. Uh, but the mostly. Talk about the historic city, the historicized side of the Quran. We keep saying that we cannot historically understand the Quran, but when it comes to a name, Abu Laham, uh, you can interpret it in another way rather than referring to a person. Then the uh, nickname, it is. Abu Lahab uh, means a person who, or anybody, and in, in, in Arabic, when they say Abu Huraira, it doesn't mean that he is the father of the cat. <laughs> no, but he loves, it means he loves uh, the cat. Uh, so we can describe him as Abu Huraira. There are quite a number of uh, examples that the people narrate it's quite normal in arabic it is an arabic language and it is in the nature of the language abu lahab may be a title of a person maybe that as it is translated here in the translation i have chosen the father of flame it means a person who is engaged or lost in flame. Everywhere is burning. Every emotions are burning. But the main problem we have to uh, understand, if we try to, if when we try to understand the Quran, I'm sure you all do to try to understand the Quran. I'm sure. Sometimes when you look at the sources, narrations, you feel that it is impossible not to refer the subject to its historical context. Impossible. Here is, look at the, the, the name is famous in, uh, during the prophet's time, Abu Lahab is uncle but not really direct uncle through mother or something but doesn't matter doesn't matter he is related to the prophet they were neighbors next door neighbors and uh, abu Lahab's two sons were married to the prophet's two daughters but when the 
the Gaudi Salaam declared this prophethood to Ahmed Beher forced his son to divorce his daughters. The relationship goes on this way. Okay, um, these are historical events. The famous event, another famous event, that the prophet, uh, the, the, the messenger of Allah, called people for an emergency case. That was uh, the fashion of that time. They, they used to call people, come on, uh, one, there are certain Arabic uh, expressions for it. Come on, listen to me, it's very urgent, come on. Uh, everybody gets together for the gospel, very emergent, uh, urgent case. So the prophet declared this and everybody gathered. This story, I'm sure you, you have heard of it. And the prophet uh, said, if I say it, that there is an enemy from behind uh, the hill or the mountain, would you believe me? They said, yes, because he was famous as a trustful person. Um, and then he said, okay, then if you believe me, I'm telling you and I'm warning you about a very important event which will take place. It means you will be resurrected, the world will be destroyed, and then everybody will be resurrected and you will be taken into account. And that history uh, narrates that his uh, second uh, degree uncle, Abu Lahab, uh, come on, uh, as the uh, verse says, um, how do you say, may your hand be destroyed, uh, perished, yeah. Did you call us for this? We thought there was a very uh, important thing that you are going to do. tell us. Of course, the, uh, the expectations are completely different. What is important for the, uh, for the messenger of God is different from what is important for the ordinary people, for the Meccan people, or especially the people there. That, this does not mean that the Meccan people did not believe in God, but they did not have the concept of resurrection. The universe is created by God, and that's it. Ishmael was the blood of God, and they, they are the progenies of the lineage of Ishmael. They didn't know even Ishmael was a prophet or something, but they respected Ishmael. Now, are we going to deny that since the Quran cannot be read within that historical context, are we going to deny that this chapter is not related to Abu Lahab at all, but also in a particular person? The Quran is the eternal speech of God and for all humanity at, the, at all times. How can you understand the Quran mentioning a person lived during the Prophet's time and really read the Prophet a lot? Uh, okay insulted the prophet with his wife. Historically, everybody agrees on it. Veneration, but we have no reason not to believe in that reality. But at the same time, the nature of the Quran, God's word, cannot be reduced to an event which happened, okay, all right, and none of my business. Now, 
as a reader, as an addressee of the Quran right now, why should I bother about what happened during the life of the messenger of God? Why should I bother? If, if, if it happened in this way or another way, it is gone. I am concerned with what? My own strength, my own questions, my own concern. And when I read the Quran, I read the Quran as a guide of my creator to teach me what my questions are. It never occurred to me that my real question is, I don't know what happened to the prophet 1400 years ago when a person opposed him and raised him a lot. What am I going to do with it? Oh, none of my business. If the narration, the history, historians had not the narration, this it would have never occurred to my mind at all. Even other events, you know, some wars and big uh, calamities happened uh, during the uh, certain uh, tribes or people in the history. So what shall I do? None of my business. What happened to, I don't know, Kamalud, I don't know, the Pharaoh, whatever happened, happened in the past. My problem is now completely different. And I need guidance to my questions. And I have a lot of questions concerning my personal life, individual life within the context of this society, this civilization. I need guidance within the context of this civilization. If someone tells me a story which happened thousands of years ago that they rebelled God and God, God destroyed them, I say there are a lot of rebellions are going on and they are not destroyed. What does it mean? I'm, uh, am I just expected to go home and wait that the Manhattan will sink into the ocean or something? No, it's not my reality. Now the problem is, how are we going to deal with the historical events narrated in the Quran? I address the Quran or read the Quran as addressing to my present real life. I must do that. So it is not very difficult. Without denying the historical context, we can relate the Quran, read the Quran, directly related to our personal life. It's not very difficult at all. If only there's one thing, one condition for it, to make it very easy. We have to have an understanding of the narration or the nature of the narration of the Quran. Now, from one aspect, revelation of the Quran is historical. We have to understand this. We know that 1500 years ago, there was no Quran revealed to a person who is called Muhammad, and he declares that he is the messenger of God. 1500 years ago. It happened during a certain historical time. And it happened that this person lived in a certain location of the earth. They are the reality. They are not made up stories. So from one aspect, but be careful with the word, not the Quran, but the revelation of the Quran to humankind took place within a historical context. It means historical time, historical place, or geographical place. There is no need to deny that. This is one side of the matter. It's very simple. You can read a lot of stories, men, uh, men
mentioned in the uh, interpretations or commentaries on the Quran, but at the same time, you can read them and it's a very dangerous word, ignore them. Read them, but ignore them. Why? Why should we read it, but also ignore it? You understand? It's a little bit uh, difficult to do that. You, uh, a lot of scholars uh, fail to do this. They, they are lost in the history. They are lost in the history and let, uh, told the history to the reader and left the reader to decide for himself. They didn't update it. Especially, they did, we are not expecting a, a commentator on the Quran to update the meaning of the Quran when he lived, let's say, in the 15th century according to 20th century. No. We don't expect that. At least we expect this uh, interpreters or commentator to update the meaning, the message, actually, message of the Quran up to their sense. Us now, for example, let's say a commentator wrote a commentary on the Quran on the 15th century. He must explain it. He is expected to explain it within the context of 15th century. We don't expect this person to say something within the context of 16th century. That's fair. Okay, we understand that. Has it been done in the uh, scholarship, Muslim scholarship? Not widely. That is an unfortunate case. Some people try to interpret it in, an, in another way than is to where, where the historians told or narrated the event. But majority of them narrated the history and left it to the reader to take lesson from it. Look, of course, there is a fine tuning there. Reading the historical event, taking a lesson from it in one case. But reading the event which, is, which mentions any historical event, but read it is directly speaking to you. Look, taking the lesson is different because you read the news in the Quran, what happened between famous Moses and Pharaoh, and take a lesson from it. What? Ah, uh, I have to go to Pharaoh because the Quran says that. The Quran says uh, that we ask Moses, go to Pharaoh and speak. Some people took it literally <laughs> and uh, go to White House, for example. I don't think it happened, but go to White House and say that you are like Pharaoh in the Quran. And the Quran said, ask Moses to go and speak to them. He speaks to men and makes men hate this <laughs> so rather than uh, convey the message. Some people took it literally. The other one is, let me take a lesson from it. Okay, let's take a lesson from it. What? Can I go to Pharaoh's palace? And speak to them, speak to him. No, they wouldn't let me go into, if the Pharaoh is someone into his palace, what shall I do? Uh, okay, we are expected to be brave, but I am not that brave. It's not a plan, it is not related to my reality. You, can, you cannot always, I, I don't think so, uh, not always really, 
almost never take lesson from the historical narrations. For example, there was a tribe, Sabud, yeah, and God destroyed these people. They didn't listen to the prophet. Take a lesson from it. If I don't listen to the prophet, God will destroy me. I'm 68 years old, he didn't destroy me. I know from 90, 100 years old Chinese, my neighbor, 97 something years old Chinese, he says he doesn't believe in anything and he's not destroyed. How can I get a lesson from this now? It's not really. So people say Quranic narrations are for us to take lesson. I tried realistically questioning. I couldn't get any lesson. Could I, I didn't see any relevance of the subject to my real life. You know, Kamalut is famous local government. There was something, homosexuality, something like that. There are really famous in New York, it's very famous. You know, somewhere else as well. Uh, nothing happens to them. <coughs> what are you going to do now with the worst? Huh? So, these are serious questions. Let's not cheat ourselves. Let's not really take the Quran on the superficial level and in a simplistic way. We cannot take lesson from the narrations, which the Quran is full of narrations of the old ancient tribes and people. You cannot listen, you cannot let, take lesson from it. I tried, I couldn't. Be realistic. But if I said, of course, we have to read them and we have to take lesson from it. It sounded excellent. Let's take a lesson from Kamadot. Huh? What are you going to do? So the prophet came, comes and says, don't do this. There are lots of people, but don't misunderstand. And let's say I am one of them. Okay, I'm doing it. Nothing happens to me. Why? I say I will. The result is I lose my trust in the Quran because I took the same way as the common Lord took and that nothing happened to me. The Quran says I destroyed them, I'm not destroyed. No, definitely it is not the way of reading the Quran. So from one aspect, there are many problems. I have been thinking about it really. How can I deal with this chapter? It's, Problematic, you know, from many aspects, but it's not problematic for me, frankly. But if you look at the source, everybody talks about uh, this chapter, Lehab or whatever, Flame or Tabat or uh, whatever you call them, there are the various meanings. We are going to study someday one talk about it or write about it, pages and pages and pages, whoever will have was. How horrible man he was. How proud man he was. Okay. I don't know him. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've never met him. He died away. What am I going to do with him? Now, now there are three, uh, this way, there are three aspects of the method. Reading the historical narrations of the Quran in order to take lesson, which does not work. Yeah. Reading the Quran as narrating the event, what happened during the Prophet, that is what all the Quran is all about. And then it becomes, it, it makes the Quran alien to me. Okay. Ignoring the reality of the revelation of the Quran in a historical context is also not true. Because it's reality. Three. But what, what am I going to do now? There is a fourth way. Let's define the Quran. As far as the revelation side of the Quran is concerned, 
It is historical. Established, do you agree? It's historical. Um, uh, it started uh, during the life of the prophet when he was 40 years old. I, I don't like history, historian dates. And it ended with the death of the prophet. Right? That is reality. It took 20, the revelation of the Quran took 23 years during the life of the prophet, according to, be careful with this word now, according to the conditions of the life and of the prophet within a certain society, right? But the revelation of the Quran, be careful. I'm not saying the word of God Speech of God, Kalamullah in Arabic. I am saying revelation of the Quran is concerned. It took place within an historical time and place. Space, right. What am I going to do with it? Some people, yeah, some people emphasize that, look, we have to be careful that within the context of this story, the, the Quran presents an example. An example. If the case was like this, the result will be in this way. Somehow, this thesis sometimes work, but when it comes to ancient tribes, mostly those tribes who rebelled the, uh, the messengers of God, uh, okay, this is the application of it, and I cannot get really much, info, much uh, benefits from it. But that is one side of it, but um, that's the fourth way. Yes, it took place in the uh, within a history, historical context, and also this is the speech of the Creator addressing to human beings living, experiencing certain type of life right now, every moment. So what we have to do. We have to always universalize the meaning. Always. Universalize the meaning. Not related to certain tribe and memorize which tribe was it. What, were they cousins or were, were they brothers, sisters, <laughs> none of my business. Yeah? For example, Harun and Moses were brothers according to the Quran. If you don't have a brother, what are you going to do? Hmm? What does it mean? Does it have to be a brother? And what does it mean for you? For you, you have to bring the subject to yourself and work together. Under this condition, let's uh, come to our reality now. The Prophet Muhammad is upon him did like this acted like this that is mentioned in the quran now under these conditions look for your own conditions now you cannot imitate the same conditions but benefit from it this is the first practice of the message of the quran that time but we cannot really uh, confine this practice to this period of time only. We have to bring it up. Bring it up to our time conditions now. And try to see the similarities between them. And see what the guidance we are getting from the speech of the Creator. Our Creator right now. See the similarity then we can we can benefit the Quran from the Quran as 
the speech and the guidance of my creator within my conditions right now. Of course, be careful here, everybody. We are talking a very dangerous subject, actually. If the scholars hear us, because we are throwing many commentators out of the window. So it is very dangerous. Why the scholars did not take this way? It means, yes, it happened certain within a certain conditions during the life of the prophet, but as we said, we shouldn't deny it, we shouldn't learn it, we should learn it, but we shouldn't forget the principle, ignore it. If you are going to ignore it, why do you learn it? If you learn it, why do you ignore it? It looks contradictory. That's the solution I could find myself. Why ignore it? You yeah, learn it somewhere in your mind, but 95% of the concern will be, okay, it happened that time like this anyways. It's not directly related to my case, I'm sure, but how am I going to apply it to my real life right now? 95% of your energy will be to, uh, trying to apply the conditions to yourself. It looks reasonable, doesn't it? Well, but to, to me, it's very reasonable. It's a moderate way, not completely denying the history, not completely denying the narrations of hadith, etc. There are people, but very furious people, they, they reject everything. Okay, that's their choice, it's not my choice. But at the same time, not to reduce the Quran to its historical context. And it, as if denying the nature of the Quran is to be the eternal speech of God. Because the Quran, by definition, must be eternal speech of the Quran. Do we understand that? It must be eternal speech of the Quran. Why? If, is the, if it is the speech of God, it must be, God is absolute, his speech must be eternal. Right? So and if it is eternal, it means God is not subject to, God's knowledge is not subject to, or God's knowledge is not, not limited to certain time. God's knowledge is absolute. It means boundless. Now, while God was revealing the verse to Muhammad at that time, don't take that I am irrespectful saying. Anytime I say Muhammad, Allah Muhammad, Sayyidina Muhammad, this kind of thing, by, by mentioning the name doesn't make any sense. But, Remembering the message of the Quran, message of the Prophet, and respecting it and being pleased with it is another matter. Otherwise, like a parrot, repeat whenever the name is mentioned, and it's a long story afterwards, I'm saying, and half of the khutbahs are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the other half is the Prophet Muhammad, the alayhi salatu wa salam, etc., etc., half of the speech. So I don't, uh, it doesn't really sound realistic. And I don't think it, it, it mentioning the name means anything. But receiving the message and being pleased with it and supporting the message, yes, you can say, peace and blessings be upon his, him who, received, who delivered this message to me and enlightened me consciously. Not that I repeat and you don't really mean it. So don't say that I am respectful. Now, uh, let's come to the uh, to main subject now. What are we going to do with the Quran? We have to read it as related to our life by definition because it is the speech of the absolute creator. The, as the creator, 
should have the knowledge with no limit of the time. As he was speaking to Muhammad, and at the same time, he knows that the time will be 2017, and somebody was your name? Muhammad. Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Gula. Gula. Okay, Gulen. So, Gulen will be <laughs> listening to this speech today, July something, in this place, and this is the speech of God. He, the God, if it is God, must be aware of it at the same time in equal degrees. Now, Muhammad will receive Gulet, Gulet or Gulet? Gulet. Gulet will receive the same message and as far as the absolute creator is concerned, they are equal. Now then, you, no, no one can say that, of course, it was alive during the Prophet Muhammad but later on, people will take lesson from it. This is not the speech of God. This is, I don't know, uh, how do you say, the uh, Arabian Nights stories, or not the stories, how are they called? Stories? Are they called stories? Tales. Yeah. Tales or stories, Arabian, uh, other 99, 1001 Arabian Nights tales. Sorry? Question. You've got a question. Okay, keep it. Keep it. Just, uh, yeah. but don't forget. Okay. No, it's good. I got you. Okay. Now, uh, so when you read the uh, stories, there are moral advices, of course, in all epics, tales, children's stories. There are morals. And so those people who write, they mean that they have to teach. They they want to they want to teach something to the reader, but they are not absolute. They are not infinite. They only think of, for example, I'm writing a book for let's say eighth grade, ten grade children, according to their needs, who are living in America within the conditions now, the 21st century. And they don't know what will happen in the 22nd century. Everything is so rapidly changing. So they write this, but they don't really know what is happening, what will happen next time. Of course, the people read it and relate it to themselves, but uh, take lesson from it, but they are not eternal. They are not in other aspect of the Quran. This speech of God to the people, every single person individually taken into account. Why? God means the creator of the universe, what we are doing here. Yeah, but we don't have to prove it, it's not our subject. God, by definition, means the creator of the universe from the beginning to the end. Doesn't he create me individually? I am unique. Yeah? You are unique. You are unique. You are different. You are different. Everybody is unique. So why his speech will be individual, his creation will be individually targeted why the speech should not be individually targeted? Do you understand? This is a very important question. So, if his creatorship is absolute, without time limit, space limit, why we should say that his speech is time limit? Impossible. It cannot be God's speech if he is not. Uh, speaking, knowing that one, one day my speech 
will be read by bullet. Bullet. Right? And it, it cannot be cut speech that if it, it is it is not individually addressing. Now, before I forgot, remind me why the scholars did not open up this side of the nation. Wrote it, left it to the reader to take lesson from it, and a lot of information. Who was Abu Lahab? Example, a lot of information. He was the uncle. I don't have an uncle. I'm sorry. Was very famous in the society. There are more famous people nowadays than Abu Lahab. None of my business. Celebrities, I never watch TV, so it doesn't my it is not my concern. So he was rich, oh, in New York, everybody is rich. Yeah, if you go to Wall Street, there are billions. What shall I do? Oh, no, no. I have nothing to do with that. I am not uh, no, no. he was they say flameless because his face was so bright, and that's why they call him a bull. Ah. Or his wife was called Umm Jamil. No, there was no Jamil, but it means the, how do you say, the figure, what figure? Of beauty. She was, they say, she was the most beautiful lady in that society. I don't know, my wife is not that good. <laughs> yeah, she's <laughs> <beautiful. laughs> She's okay. <laughs> so, well, not the, the most beautiful lady, you know, this is what I mean. ah, so She doesn't claim also, but according to her, she is okay. No. <laughs> so, um, it's not my concern. None of my business, she was beautiful or not. <coughs> yeah? was she, if she was ugly, what do you think it would have met her? What does it mean? No. Why it was obvious that the Quran speaks individually? Why the scholars did not open up this option? That's a question. There is no answer. Before getting into this very important answer to the question, and we have to be careful about it, I have to listen to the question or comment. Um. So what you're talking about? So South Asian Muslims are really obsessed with the concept. Slowly, I'm not. I'm an old guy. I'm, I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about Bida. What do you mean by Bida? I'm thinking about the uh, the like innovation. Innovation, and yes. In our, our communities, people are innovating the technology. They, I like. I was taught Islam in such a way that said that I am not because I'm not a scholar. I'm not allowed to try to understand what it really means because I would be innovating a idea and the act of updating the idea is haram. That's yeah. what I was talking okay. about. Okay. What, are you, what, it, are, you, what are you going to do with that? Uh, ignore it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what is your relationship with the Quran or what do you think that not only you personally, but since you are speaking, you can speak on behalf. What do you think any person next to you should do? Because don't innovate, don't update speaking to you. God is speaking to you individually, knowing that today is the July of what? I have lost the date. 27th. 27th of July 2017 in this uh, NYU building. We are uh, trying to uh, establish the principles of reading this kind of things. And God, who creates you right now, knows that you are going to hear this verse. Mm. But don't innovate. Don't try to understand. You are not a scholar, but God is speaking to you. Do you think God is stupid? You are not a scholar, man. Why does he speak to you? You may be innovating, yes, innovating something, making up some things out of the verses. And since I am going to make a mistake, why does God speak to me? 
because I'm not expected to understand. <laughs> what are you going to do? These are the language which are inculcated into our mind that we have to imitate others and others have to imitate others. Others have to imitate uh, 1400 years ago scholars. They have to imitate, I don't know, the, the society. And also the society is mostly corrupt by the sultans. The Quran is lost. Actually, you made a good point. That was the classical, the point of the classical scholarship. That's why they didn't say, they didn't emphasize that God is speaking to you, knowing that you are going to hear it now, and knowing the conditions you are in, knowing the weaknesses you are in, you have, knowing the challenges you have, questions you have, concerns you have, if you alienate yourself, saying that I am not a scholar, Quran never says that you can only understand me if you are a scholar. No one says that. I'm speaking to human beings. Everybody will get the very famous, very famous saying, I wouldn't uh, mention the name, because it's my principle to avoid uh, mentioning the name. Ocean is there, ocean. But everybody can get water according to capacity of his cup. Yes, you can get this much. This is from the ocean. You can get that much. That is from the ocean as well, but all are from the ocean. If you want to get more of the ocean, you have to enlarge in your cup. It doesn't mean that my cup is very small, so it is not worth it, so I wouldn't get it. I will die of thirst. It means I will have no knowledge of religion. I will have no benefit from the Quran, the speech of God. Now, of course, there are a lot of uh, concerns among the scholarship that they said, if we say that Quran speaks to individuals according to their individual conditions, they will try to interpret like you know, your concern, which, which is very valid and which is not correct at all, but it's very common and it comes to people's mind. I don't know. So, for example, Quran is not like a chemistry book. No. Chemistry book needs specialization. Right? Quran says, no, 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 I am a clear speech. You can benefit from it, or, of course, as much as your capacity. Okay, uh, but you have to have a right attitude. If you don't have a right attitude, you are free, you can divert it, you can distort it, you can distort it, that is against you. If you want to distort it, distort it, then you will be the loser. And you are free to lose because hell is out there waiting <laughs> for some people. So, uh, God created us free, yeah? And I can try to get the truth or I can try to distort the truth and make it as I like, yeah? As I want. My carnal, carnal desires. Make it and say that. You are free, everybody is free. Of course, the, uh, the freedom is beautiful. Freedom is uh, inevitable for everybody. Every, everyone wants to be free, but freedom is the source of responsibility. 
or remember. Now, whatever you do, not because you did this or you did that, but how you used your freedom, because you are a creator with freedom, with the power of freedom. So freedom is very important. If you if somebody misuses it, it is up to him. If somebody is careful about it, again, it is for his benefit. That's up to him. Free, we are free. Until we die, the freedom is has not been taken away from us. When we die, we finish the conditions of this creation, finish endless. Now, the scholars had the same concern. If we say that God speaks to persons individually, everybody will say, okay, that's what I understood from the Quran. Oh, the community, solidarity, community, how do you say, a united community will be destroyed. But everybody will start speaking from himself. That was the fear. In order to protect the society from falling into confusion, they preferred to encourage people not to think about the Quran. If you are professional, then you can speak. If you are not professional, you just follow the professional ones. You cannot benefit. Now, there are many problems following this. You know, Catholicism, uh, the, almost the most, the highest populated, populated religious community is Catholics. Catholics. Am I right? Definitely more than a billion people in the world are Catholics. The question, what is the most likely used language in the world? What comes to your mind? What comes to your mind? Sorry? Chinese. Sorry. Mandarin Chinese. Mandarin Chinese? No. No? Spanish. <laughs> well, most of the Spanish-speaking people are Catholic. Whether they know or they don't know, that's something else. But they say we are Catholics. They identify themselves demographically, demographically as uh, Catholics. So more, there are more Catholics in the world than the Muslims. Right? So Christianity in general, of course, the, the highest population. Now, but this is an uh, official figure. But it doesn't mean much, really. But people feel comfortable that one of the major reasons of Catholicism to spread widely, to me, to my understanding, is this. It says, the Catholicism says, you don't understand. You are not uh, bishops. So don't almost touch the Bible. Just if you have any problems, come to the church, listen to the bishop, so the community will keep their unity. So that will be a united community. There, there wouldn't be many ideas flourishing from everybody's mind. It looks very practical, isn't it? Doesn't it? Very practical. But which kind of benefit it brings to the person. The society is united. Everybody looks at the mouth of the top. Whatever he says, that's it, final. Okay, does it make sense to you? Uh, I am not a scholar, I don't know. I have to imitate Paul, right? It makes the people's responsibility easy. You don't have to study the Bible. You don't have to use your mind. You don't have to use your humanity. 
you go and imitate certain authorities and you are done. It's easy, isn't it? You don't have to, for example, if you have a problem, go and ask the professor. He will tell you and you will do it. But uh, let's say you are taking a chemistry class and you are having some sort of uh, chemical reactions in your house and you don't know what to do. Ask the professor. The professor says, put sulfate and then this and then this and mix it up. Finish. Have you learned chemistry? Huh? What, what benefit did it bring to you? Just to imitate the professor. But if Islam, when Islam comes, Islam says, Quran says, hey, everybody must come to the class from the first year, the second year, the third, the fourth, and must graduate from. Oh, it is a big responsibility, isn't it? That is the easy way not to take the responsibility on your own shoulders. It's a very easy way. People love it. You know, if you speak to Spanish people, or the Hispanics, or whatever, but they never study the, uh, the Bible, the, any, any religious text. They say they are Catholics, and, and they are Catholics. So they, if they have a problem, they go to the church and ask the bishop. So they, the bishop tells them to do this, not to do that. Do they understand why? No. They just imitate. Because they are not scholar. This tendency is very widely, has very widely influenced most of the majority most of the communities, including Muslim community. Make them lazy. Choose the lazy way. Now, if I say, what's your profession? Would you like to speak? I'm a student. Student studying what? Economics. Economics. Why do you study? Why don't you just go ask your professor and we'll let you know what? Why do you go to the class? Why do you learn? Why do you have a lot of textbooks? And one uh, year one, year, year two, you the semester one, two, three, four. Why do you follow it? Why, why don't you just go and learn it? Uh, not learn it. You don't have to learn. When you have any problem, ask your professor. He will tell you. Why? How many years have you been studying economics? Four years, you are the senior. Yeah. Now you and then after four years, you will say, "I I am an economist." Right? Apparently, that's what I can say. After I get my degree. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know the college education, I'm an <laughs> but you have to do some master studies, the loss of experience, etc. Then you can get a good job. Now, why don't you say that I'm not a scholar? Why did I say that I'm not a scholar? Why don't you say that I am not a scholar? So why did you bother to study economics? You are not a scholar. You, when you, before you started the college, were you a, a scholar of economics? No. No, but you became a scholar, almost a scholar, somehow scholar of economics. Eh? Yes. Why did you do that? When when you say that, look, I'm not a scholar. Now, it is a contradictory yeah, system. My yeah, friend, no, I don't like the word system. <laughs> so my friend, it is a contradictory that we are living in this world. When it comes to our worldly life, temporary life, we never say that I'm not a scholar. Why should I bother to go to the class? When it comes to the religion, we become a Catholic. Yeah, it's easy. Not to touch the Bible, not to touch the Quran, never think about it, never try to learn it. Now, I'm not a scholar. I go to private prayer. And once, I, once in a week, I listen half an hour speech by the Imam giving the sermon. 
and well, we're not like this. Sit there and we have no mind because I don't know, or oh, because I have no capacity. If you are not going to evaluate what is taught, why do you listen? Because you you are not going to question what is taught. Why do you listen to the scholar? Because you are not an expert. Why do you bother? These are uh, layers upon layers upon layers excuses for the laziness of the laziness of the day. But when it comes to money making, uh, I have to study, I have to go to college, and you pay. Eh? Well, when it comes to, I'm not referring to this class, eh? if there is something, there is a class. And they ask you, but you have to attend this, uh, let's say, one month class, and you have to pay 1,000. Oh, when it comes to religion, no, 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 no. But when it comes to college degree, if it is accredited degree, you know, you get credit, then you pay not 1,000, 3,000, 4,000, depending on the school, 5,000. Yeah, if you go to this school, I think 60,000. A year. Who pays sixty thousand a year to learn the Quran? <laughs> they're gonna pass. Huh? I think they're gonna pass. Yeah. So must be free. Although it is free, this class is free. Not many people attend. Why? They are not scholars. No. This is the. <laughs> This is as if I am a scholar. No, 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 I'm not like you. You know, I'm trying to understand. It is in my mind for a week, and we are going to study this lab or the, the flame chapter of the Quran. What shall I do with it? What shall I say? What is the relation, uh, in the relation of the context of the Quran to me? How can I benefit from it so that I can share? And of course, I said, oh, before studying the uh, or examining or going through the nature of the Quran and our relationship with the Quran, we cannot really study. You say that we have even not read one verse. Because uh, if I read it, perish the hands of the father of flame, perish here. Okay. What shall I do? Okay. He will perish. His, his, uh, his hand will perish. Okay. What shall I do? Yeah. <laughs> you are right. You are right. My love. Yes. What shall I do? You will be better. Okay. And say that this is Allah's God speaking. God is cursing a man. Who Instead of cursing a man, I would say, well, I'm a little bit weird in this sense, speaking to God, why don't you just perish his hand? Instead of speaking and asking me to say the same thing. Yeah, you can create. The creator of the, uh, the universe, creator of Abu Lahab is complaining about Abu Lahab. Creator of Satan is complaining about Satan. I would say, look, you are the creator of Satan, man. Kill him. <laughs> so why do you keep complaining about it? And telling me as if, you know, if, if I cannot, I am an, a, a weak person, so I cannot do anything. Please say the, your, uh, okay, Glenn, please, <laughs> you know, beat up this man for me. This is what I mean. I cannot do it because I cannot do it. I ask you to beat him up. But the creator, when it comes to the creator, he is creating and then keeps complaining. I say, instead of complaining, kill him. <laughs> yes, you can do it. But it is all contradictory. To understand that, really complaining about the Satan as opposing his, uh, his commands or his uh, will and uh, deviating people from the right path, just get rid of him. Yeah? Rather than getting rid of him, 
telling us that he is doing, he is describing my, uh, how do you say, creatures, my human, my humans. He is harming them. He is taking them to hell. Why does he tell? Of course, it is not a complaint. It is for me. It is related to me. Directly saying that you watch out for yourself. Nothing to do with me. I am telling you this. Rather than God is complaining as if he cannot do it, asking or calling 911, help me, something is happening. You are God, the creator of the old room, the universe. It is, it is a, not a job. You, you cannot read the Quran like this at all. You have to understand that my creator is guiding me right now, nothing to do with him. So he's telling me that you watch out. You yourself watch out. You have a tendency towards this or towards that. So you better wake up and concentrate on your problems and choose this way or another way. Decide about it. I am just telling you what is right, what is wrong, and leaving you free to decide. It is this is the best way of studying the Quran. If someone says no, but I don't understand it. The language has said, I, uh, I appreciate it. Yeah. And I do. It took me so many years to learn the language of the Quran as much as I learned now. Of course, it is not easy. But at the same time, understanding the Quran does not necessarily need to learn the Arabic language. Understanding the Quran, I keep saying this, but uh, some people get annoyed with it. I don't care. <laughs> you know, I keep saying that understanding the Quran primarily depends on your comprehension of the nature of the Quran. But the other language side is extra. Now, um, did we have a clear mind that we, uh, we have to read this text now as directly speaking to me, as it spoke to Muhammad and his companion at that time, right? But equal, look, he spoke to uh, the prophet, the messenger of God, and the people around him, and now I have to take lesson to it, this lesson from it from the case. No. Be careful about it. What? He spoke to the person, let's say, in Delhi, 12, uh, let's say, 12th century, during the 12th century, in a village, when the person read it, he spoke to him, at the same time, he spoke to Muhammad, of equal terms, and he is speaking to me right now in equal terms. I am not a second class a human being, so that he took the first man and the rest, if you, if you like, you can get some lesson from it. But my main address is this man. It doesn't work. It, is, it doesn't fit, in, uh, fit the definition of the creator, God. He created Muhammad with two eyes, two ears, one nose, and he created me with the same things. And there may be some uh, more handsome people in the world than Muhammad, created by the same God. So that in the eye of the Creator, as he creates, he creates everybody individually. Yeah? unique characteristics. So when he speaks, he speaks to everybody individually. What my responsibility is, I have to sit in front of the Quran and have a right understanding of the, uh, of the reading the Quran and benefiting from it as much as my cup 
allows me the capacity of my car. So if I want to get more, Bring your transcripts. Let me see how much you have learned from it. A plus, A, B plus, C, or F. How much you learn? Because your professor is another person there, and the, pers the people who are going to employ you or benefit from your service will look at your capacity in economics. Why do you think the religion or the belief is not like that? Prophet's belief is was so huge and uh, unreachable, bottom, what you say, say bottomless or? Bottomless. Bottomless, huh? Bottomless. Okay. Okay. You are? I love him. Okay. When they, when they employ you, for, for example, let's say, who is the, the most famous economist now? Who is the most famous economist now? Do you know, do, do you know any name? <laughs> Give me. Paul Krugman. Sorry? Jeffrey Sachs. Jeffrey Sachs is a guy. Uh, somebody, I don't, and none of these people are good. They all study capitalism. So, do, do you, did you get the name? Karl Marx. Sorry? No. <laughs> no. Okay. John Nash. John Nash. Sorry? John Nash. John Nash. 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 Okay. So he is the most famous. John Nash is the most famous economist. Okay. You say go to apply for a job yeah, f uh, and write your resume and say, I love John Nash. Peace be upon him. <laughs> huh? Yeah, peace and blessings be upon him. What happened? The people will say, read your resume. Ah, oh, this person loved John Natch. Huh? Okay. Come here and do this job. But I love John Natch. I don't know how to do it. John Natch knows. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? Yeah. What do you think the employer will say to you? Huh? Are you playing with me? It's not a joke. It's not working? No, but I'm recording you, so I'll fix it after. Okay, this. you can do something. So it's not a joke. It is a real job. And you have to do it. Do you remember in this class, we keep saying that belief is an individual matter. Belief is an individual matter. It means you can only believe as much as you worked on your belief. When you say, I love Muhammad, okay, how much did you learn from him? I love John, John Natch, okay? How many class did you take from him? Class. Attended his class. Isn't that reality? <laughs> it's horrible, isn't it? Yeah, it's it is horrible. very bad. We have to work on religion and we have to pay for it as well. Oh, God. <laughs> it, it is very difficult. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so I don't know what to do now. <laughs> do you understand now that uh, the verse, shall we go over the verse or shall we stop? It's very simple, very simple. It becomes very simple to me now to understand. Perish the hands of the father of flame, perish he. Who, oh, the, the person is cursed by God. Yes? Now, I think in other subject we have to talk. A person is mentioned in the Quran or in the Hadith is not because of his 
physical personality because of, for example, if I say this person is in, this person is an atheist. No? No. I don't like atheists. When you say, I don't like atheism, atheists, what do you mean? You don't like the persons or you don't like the atheistic ideas? And whoever assumes the atheistic ideas is not the person, but his ideas make him atheist. Not the, his personality is not atheist. He's created by God. But what makes him atheist is his idea. Because of it is because the Quran always says, Oh, the unbelievers. Yeah. Who are they? Right? Do you think the Quran is finger pointing to certain people? Unbelievers, 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 this man, this man, this man. Whoever has any kind of atheistic ideology is the addressee of the Quran because of the atheistic ideology, not because of his personality. So we have to understand that Quran never pinpoints the people like this because of his characteristics. So let's see this verse now. What is he talking about the father of the father of flame? What is he? That neither his wealth benefited him, nor what he earned. Ah, the Quran is telling me now. If I expect any benefit from my wealth and from what I have heard, earned, God says, you, Ali, perished yourself. Abu Lahab disappeared. Right? Me! Did you get it? Me! It's a very... Not taking a lesson. God is telling me, within the historical context of the revelation, giving an example of a certain person representing certain attitude, now I have to forget about the person. <laughs> we, said, we said we have to read it, but we have to ignore it. Forget about the person. Take the characteristics that the per, that, that characteristics makes the person as Abu Lahab. Now I have nothing to do with the person, right? For example, if I if I have a problem with an atheistic person, same person, let's say the following day rejected the atheistic ideology. What happens? He becomes your best friend. The same person. It means you did not have any problem with the person, but you had some so you had problems with his ideology, with his characteristics. That's how the Quran must be read. Nothing to do with the person. Forget about it. What what is his characteristics? He was expecting benefit from his wealth, from his earnings, status, etc. For example, so most of the people take notice of what? His status among his family. Close friend. So what does what do my family members will say if I fail? Right? What the people, of course, not everybody who, who doesn't know, those people don't know you, only who knows you, and maybe the 10 or 20 people among your family circle or close friend circle. 
The rest, if you are a billionaire walking in the Washington Square, no one knows you. Only your wife, your husband, your children, your uncle, your cousins, your whatever, niece and nephews, all that is family. We are working for family members. If a helpful of people, that, that these are our fame, source of fame. Otherwise, when you go there to the subway, no one knows who you are. No one cares who you are. <laughs> but only if a friend comes and says, Assalamu alaikum or whatever they say, you know. Ah, now, your personality matters. Otherwise, among the millions of people, your personality doesn't matter at all. One person, your, your acquaintance, whatever, the way you have the acquaintance. So, we, we take notes of the people around us and we work for, for them in order to get fame, really. But it's a very limited uh, number of people that we, we are always concerned with. The earnings is cassette. Earning is this what we have, not only money earning here, the, the money is mentioned as wealth. Yeah? The earning is, is our fame, our status in the society, but not everybody. Among a very handful of people, very small number of people, we take notice of our status. Because the, the, the other people don't know you and don't, don't really care about your status. You may get the most expensive car. <clears throat> Why do you get the most expensive car? To drive here, <clears throat> and to those people who will see it, they will say, wow, look at the car. But they don't know you. Finish. They don't. But only if someone knows you, it means, let's say your cousin. So, ah. My cousin has this car. <laughs> now, because it matters then. The rest of the world doesn't matter really. No one cares. So, earnings means status among, among close family relations and friend relations. That's it. Rest of the world is not important at all. So, when we, when we, when we say Kasab here at, next to Man, it means wealth. It means our fame. But historically, the person who is known during the life of the prophet was very famous for various reasons. The, in the, he had a, a high status in the society. None of my business. I have to take care of my fame among my family members. Close family members, so small, so petty, if you like. Petty, you, you put her 10 people, 20 people, what are you going to do with them? 20 people, are you really working and trying to make your best in order to get that status among 20 people? <laughs> well, we're not a human being, who cares? So, look, if you work for fame, if you work for status, if you work for money, if you work for the best furniture in the house, if you work for the best clothes, you will perish. That's a direct speech to you of your creator. Direct speech. By your creator, directly speaking to you. What do you have in your mind? Yeah? When you get, God forbid, God forbid, when you get F, now when you get on a bus, who cares? Huh? You are driving or the riding the bus or from the school to home. Yeah? In the bus, who cares that you had F? What is your concern? 
you are, I'm going to get off the bus and get home. And my mom will say, what happened? Did you take the exam? No, what, what was the result? How did it go? Your concern is, what shall I say to my mom? <laughs> so little, so little. But God says, your fame among these 10, 20 people or 100 people, if you work for it, you will perish your life. Yet means really your power, your status, whatever. This represents in Arabic language, the most deep. But whatever you do, for the sake of somebody else, according to the uh, values of the society, no one cares and you destroy yourself for nothing. That verse is beautiful, isn't it? And how about the, let's finish it very quickly, it, the time is up now. It, he shall have to endure a flaming fire, but there is a flaming fire is lahab lahab again. Yeah? Because if you, if you do something which results uh, in flame, it means destruction, complete uh, lost, of course you will be living in a lost world, meaningless life. That's, that's obvious. Your result, the results of your gaining everything, for example, well, I, I don't have time, but if you go to an old man's house, what, what, you, see, what you see is that I'm going to die soon. Why, why should I bother about the pains? Huh? But your uncle will come. No, 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 no. The, the man is going to die. Your, your, your uh, grandson will come. Okay. I'm going to die. Right? Uh, you understand that? If we really adjust our life according to certain kinds of people's uh, respect or something, we just lose our human reality and we, we suffer from flame. It means meaninglessness, meaninglessness, hopelessness, and in the hereafter, and, and we reserved, when, we, when we are resurrected, that's not our subject. That's why I'm just jumping to the conclusion. And we will be way, uh, living the wasteful life, the result of a wasteful life. Nothing to do with your parents, your children, your grandchildren, whatever. Uh, your uncle, everything. Your auntie is more <laughs> important. So your mother-in-law, who cares? Because you, you lost your life. And meaningless if you work for wealth and fame. Now, and also his wife who carries the fuel supports this idea. Go and get it. Your, you, well, what, you know what? How are you going to get uh, married into this house? There is no new furniture. There is no Washing machine, dishwasher, etc. Yeah. But yeah, well, you cannot do that. You have to have a perfect furniture or something. Right? You have to have a cloth, perfect. You know, most expensive one, 1,000, 2,000. Wedding dress, why? But a set of one or they, all your relatives will come today. They will look at you. You look at the concern, somebody is supporting you. No, 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 you cannot do that. You know, your, your uncle will come, your auntie will come, your grandfather will come. But how can I have a wedding like this? Hi, what a surprise. Hey, we haven't prayed. Yeah? We were waiting for you. <laughs> okay, so how can I have this? How can, how can you go in front of the people? People means 20 people, right? No? With this cloth, you have to buy a new one, the most expensive one, new fashion one. 
Then what is he doing? He creates the fuel to fame, to uh, ownership of the property, fueling. You see, encouraging. But his wife, I don't know, my wife doesn't do that. And uh, this verse is not related to me because my wife doesn't uh, encourage me to get more wealth and fame. No, anyone who has these characteristics is in the representation of the Quran, your wife. You say, you know, I'm, I am a girl, I don't have a wife. <laughs> what shall I do? This word is not related to me. Not because I don't have a wife, I am a woman already. No, 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 you cannot read the Quran like that. Impossible. What you have to do now, Anyone who has this characteristic supports the idea or encourages the people to work for property, to work for wealth, and to work for fame, status. Ah, in the Quranic language, according to the time frame of the revelation, revelation, no? that's the speech of God, revelation. It, it was represented by one individual, but this individual, Abu Lahab's wife, individual has nothing to do with me. You see, we have to learn, we have to ignore. Do you understand the principle? We have to learn, we have to ignore. <laughs> it looks contradictory, but at the same time, it makes the Quran alive to me, speaking to me, guiding me right now within my own life conditions. And the Quran becomes a life, a living speech. Now, don't say that um, I don't have a wife and uh, no one is encouraged. No, no. Whoever said, how can you wear this cloth? Huh? What your, uh, your relatives, your friends will say? Do you understand? Do you understand? This is represented as the wife of Abu Lahab. So you have to look for the wife of Abu Lahab in your life. Who is encouraging you to get most of this world, but ignore your relationship with your creator? Who is encouraging you? That is Abu Lahab's wife in the language of the world. Did you get it? It's beautiful, isn't it? Now, now, and also the, ra the last one, I'm going to uh, cut it short. Around her neck is a rope of thorns or twisted rope. It means stifling, stifling. Although he is encouraging you to get most of the properties or uh, fame, but he knows that deep down as a human being, is going to die and leave everything behind. Yes, not free. Eternally I will be happy. No, no, no. I will be very famous, but 10 years, 20 years later, I will retire and no one will recognize me anymore. Do you understand? So they know that it's such stuff. Yeah, so her neck is the, is the rope of thorn, it means ah, no freedom, no eternal happiness, no way to appreciate or expect the, we call it in the language of the Quran as paradise. Everything is as I want, eternally impossible. For a person who is indulged in this world, and trying to satisfy the uh, caprices or carnal desires of this world, there is no free breathing. I got it. No, this is the, uh, although seemingly most difficult chapter of the Quran, but in fact, most realistic chapter of the Quran. Telling you what you are supposed to do in this world.
guiding you, really, right now, according to your own condition. Everybody can benefit from it if they have the intention and also pay attention to the method of leading the Quran. We have studied today mostly the method of leading the Quran, right? We will give reference to it. Inshallah, it's getting too late. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Subhanak la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana inna kanta al-alim al-hakim wa akhbu da'wahum alhamdulillah. Hope to see you next Thursday. Inshallah. Did it work? Turned off. So, or stop.